off running and GoProing and I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna bodge this one up. I'm taking you for the run and chatting about Thailand and my thoughts, what I've been doing, what I'm looking forward to. Let's go. question that lots of people ask is are you excited and to be honest it's only about now that I think we're really getting excited because there's been so much to do and organize and think about it's pretty stressful um, moving to another country but now we're really getting there I am unbelievably excited about this adventure um, I'll share with you some of my favourite visions for this life in Thailand. Vision one, waking up in the morning, just being nice and warm, wearing like shorts and a vest and having a morning coffee outside on the terrace or the patio, just being warm <sighs> all year round. Vision two, October half term, we've booked, well, we're in the process of booking a little getaway, little beach villa on an island that's dog friendly. We're gonna have our own little villa on the beach, private plunge pool, onto sand, into sea, boom. Vision three is getting into a pattern of Super early morning running before or at sunrise and just moving in that warmth. It's gonna feel different and that's exciting to me. And all those races, racing in the dark at 3.30 in the morning, crazy bananas. To be honest, the whole thing is a massive balancing act, balancing the excitement with anticipation about what it's going to be like, will it work out for us and Winnie. Um, so yeah, it's all, all a huge balance. So my running, whilst we've had all this going on, has become less of a priority and I've lost a bit of the consistency but that's okay because it's short term. I did my half marathon last Saturday. It's Saturday today. I haven't run since last weekend. Um, but it is what it is. We've got 12 and a half days of work left. Um, end of term is 7th of July. Summer term in schools is crazy. Running is kind of taken down a peg um, and it's just nice to get out when I can for the headspace and keep the fitness building. I can confirm my new running vest is awesome. Love it. Very comfortable. Lovely, relaxed run. Happy days. As soon as Mary shared her visions, I knew I had to get out and share my visions for Thailand as well. I know Mary took you out on her run to talk about her race and training plans while we're in Thailand, and I wanted to do the same because I've got some big plans for myself and for Mary. We've got big plans, but I'm excited. My plan is actually staggeringly simple when you say it out loud, and it's that I'm gonna spend the next year in Southeast Asia finding the joy, doing what I want, when I want, training how I want. I am gonna to pivot towards running because I've always wondered what would happen if I focus on running. I know I've I've put 10 years into triathlon, and especially these last four years, chasing that one iron distance goal. And you know what? When you concentrate so much, when you give so much mental energy and physical energy to a goal for so long, it's gonna take you a long time to get over that, and that's okay. I don't, I honestly don't believe I'll be able to 
focus on one particular goal for the next year and I'm really looking forward to that. So I'm going to keep myself what I call half iron ready. I'm going to swim when I want to, I'm going to cycle when I want to, but I'm going to make sure that at the drop of a hat I could go and do a half iron distance race. That's the aim. They're about four and a half to five hour races. And then that means I can focus on my running anyway and do, there's actually a couple of ultras over there that are quite famous. So I might do that depending on the heat. Well, that's that dilemma solved at least. Alpha flies for race day 100%. And I'll tell you what, I wish someone would have warned me about how much you actually accumulate in the way of junk when you live in a house for so long. Hi! Guess where we are? We've just done a tip trip. It's oh wait, so... oh, we've got to announce what this is, this segment. This is officially trademark... Catch it! We've been to the tip. Which is soul cleansing. It is, yeah. We, uh, the, what we're finding is, and I'm sure you already all know this, you accumulate so much rubbish. Yep, we've lived in our house for 10 years this year and... You just, just, you just accumulate and then suddenly, we're not. it's not like we're moving house to somewhere else in the UK where you can take all your rubbish. Yeah. It's like, oh, we got to get rid of all of this. We've got to end up with two suitcases and nothing else in our hands. Uh, yeah, and a bike and a dog, eventually. Yeah. But it's like, we really are moving minimally. We are shipping some things over to Thailand. So my turbo trainer, um, what computer. else are we shipping? The computer, podcast uh, my studio. podcast studio. My stuff drawers. Like that. Yeah, Not your, my your drawers. Underwear. Mary's drawers are so big. <laughs> <laughs> no. One set Chest of, of drawers. drawers we're taking over so we're shipping stuff but really actually we've had to n narrow it down to three segments haven't we it's, it's keep and take keep and store bin tip whatever uh, and they're really our only three choices or i mean some is give away but that's still not keep is it so that's where we're at and Oh, and we've just posted our visas, our visa applications. So you have to go through this really complicated, weird process. That doesn't tell you how doesn't, to do it. Uh, it's not really intuitive to, to get a visa to enter Thailand. So we've so, just been yeah. doing that the last few days. So we've just it? posted up our passport. So hopefully we'll get them back. If they don't come back, that's what we were saying. You know, we've sent them special delivery and everything. Everything that you would expect for the security of our passports we've done, but there's no guarantees, but we, we've sent them off to get the visa in the passports so that we can we can actually go into Thailand, into a hotel room for two weeks. That content is gonna be... That's gonna Ooh. be sweet content. So that's where we're at on that front. We need to eat. I'm like, is your stomach rumbling a bit? I was gonna go running, but I might go later now. Okay, well, we'll make that decision. Hope you like this segment. It is trademarked. It's not trademarked. I don't think you can trademark talking in a car. <laughs> Next, uh, who was the one in Coronation Street with a growly voice? Percy. Percy. <laughs> I've never watched Coronation Street. I can I just shock you? I I've never watched Coronation Street. When I was a kid, Street. and there was a character called Phyllis. Phyllis Ogden. Percy. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it before. Just go for it, man. <laughs> I'm if you're watching. <clears throat> I can't do it. Try. Person. Do you want a butter? <laughs> Sound like the cookie monster or a grouch. What's the one from Sesame Street? Mmm, cookies! That's what you sound like, not whatever her face is from Phyllis. Coronation Street. Phyllis Ogden. Yeah. Next section! That's probably the most important thing about our whole move though, right? Yeah. I think all of the other things that we've talked about so far all of the things that you talked about on your run all of the things we've considered really they're just possessions and they 
go or come and go or whatever you know yeah. however you want to view it it's you oh, let's, you can get rid of them you can buy new ones that is, is a one and only it's part of this like we're a three uh, and that's how we feel and, and this has been the hardest part of the whole move hasn't it really yeah is, just actually the most stressful bit really is working out how we get her there safely and minimize kind of her stress yeah and our stress although she probably will be less stressed than us in the long term she's got no idea what's going <laughs> on <laughs> so we're going to use this part to talk through all of the considerations of taking a pet abroad which we really didn't appreciate when we got into this but it was the only non-negotiable of the whole move was wherever we go oh, look. You right there? Yeah, no, she's fine. The only non-negotiable of the entire move is wherever we go, she goes, that's it. Yeah, we wouldn't have taken the job and um, the kind of location if we didn't think it was doable with Winnie. But now is about making it happen. Although it's overwhelmingly positive, this move, for us and, and for her, there are, there's like a few worries that maybe we'll talk through now. But the, the first worry is the actual getting her there mm. because she's not gonna understand what's going on and, and we have to actually quarantine for two weeks in a hotel, uh, which means we can't bring her with us. Yeah, she's not allowed she's, in a quarantine hotel. No. And she doesn't have to quarantine at all. Yeah, dog, dogs don't have to quarantine, we do. So we have to spend two weeks in a hotel. Uh, uh, what we think at the moment is Winnie is gonna stay with my mum and then my mum's gonna send her out and we're gonna pick her up on the other side. With so, like the help of a pet company. Yeah, we've hired a company. I mean, it's a, to take a dog abroad, to move a dog abroad, it's like over 2,000 pounds. It's getting Winnie really used to the crate because she's never really been in a crate ever, has she? No, we did have one when she was a puppy. Um, but very rarely kind of with the door closed and being inside. Yeah. Oh. oh. Now this is Winnie's carry crate. Now I didn't think this through before I started. This is, oh, Mary's put the top on the wrong way around. This is what we're looking, oh, squeechy. This is what we're looking to transport Winnie in. Come day of the flight. This is your, this is your home in here. So, easy big enough for her. Oh, little stretch. Easily big enough for her, but we've got to make it, oh. I thought she was going to go in of her own volition there. We've got to make it enjoyable for her to go in. They're in there. I like her to think or feel like it's a safe, comfortable place with treats. Plenty of space in there for her to turn around, stand up and all sorts. So while I'm playing around with the wind pup and getting her used to a little home, Mary went out for another run on a, another day, of course, to break some news about one of the first races that we are definitely locking into when we get to Thailand and we couldn't be more excited. In terms of racing, in Bangkok, we're planning on keeping it local for the first six months just because of COVID and I think travel will be limited and we'll be settling in and we really want to get to know Bangkok and the areas around so there seems to be loads of races on most weekends, kind of 5k's, 10k's so we're just going to throw ourselves in, do loads of kind of short races and get to meet people and see what the events are like and get to know the area so that's really exciting and then Bangkok Marathon got moved to the 5th of December this year so I think it was meant to be for us to run it and I can't wait it's kind of super early in the morning in the dark um, finishing at sunrise it'll be a totally different experience so 
Can't wait. Come on now, what did you expect? Mary had the GoPro last and of course she just forgot to film anything more. So I've been searching for a way to sum the video up and I'm gonna do it like this. We're racing, 5th of December, Bangkok Marathon, plenty of races in Bangkok before then of shorter distances. We couldn't be more excited and we hope that you join us on the journey. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks Mary.